Okay. Welcome back, all of you. And we are in the final session of the day, actually. So let me go on and share my screen. So here. So let me save this MP4 recording. We should get some training. Click on OK. So this is eight one. Right click and then rename it. The zero eight. It is purchasing accounting tool. I will not upload after nine o'clock. I will not upload all the three. It is not done. <clears throat> so, so now I will not go there and then see it. I click on the pending approval. So I got one such screen here. In this place, you see what happens. When I click on the pending approval, it says application developer has approved. A tick mark is coming. And then the task completed tick mark is also coming. When I click on the pending approval, it will now say both the things are done. When I click on done, now the status will now go to open from pending approval. Click on done. The status will now go to open actually. So you can see that if you click on refresh now, fine. If you click on refresh, if you click on refresh, the status will now go to open actually. So the status will open. Open means what? It is an approved PO actually. You know, approved PO. So if you click on the open status, I click on open status. <clears throat> there is a hyperlink on the open. It says it has been submitted. And then it is approved actually. It is implemented also. Fine. If you click on the submit again, fine. If you click on the hyperlink on the submit again, it will not say it has been approved by the application developer. If you click on the hyperlink on the submit again, it will now show that it has been approved by the application developer actually. Application developer is the person who has created it. If it has gone to somebody else, it will not show his name that who has approved it. And click on that. Now, the next activity is to what? Receive the PO. They go to receive it. So the PO is now approved actually. Hang on, it's now open. Thank you. So 2000 PO is approved. Thank you. I will not go to the place. Fine. Now what happens is this is the purchase officer's login. So purchase officer will not receive, but the requester will receive. You will now go to what? My uh, what happens? My EMP1 login now. Thank you. So here I will now go to what? Inventory management. I will now go to the supply chain execution. I will now go to the supply chain execution. I will now go to the supply chain execution. And then I will now go to the inventory management. So click on the inventory management. So I will now go to the inventory management. So he is basically a person who has raised the requisition actually. So the organization is coming as all now. Fine. Let us now change the organization. Fine. Click on it. Let us now go to what? Manage item quantities and then change the organization. So go this place. And click on change or. So go there. I will now put what? G71. And go there. Click on OK. The organization is changed. Now we are going to receive the P1. We are going to make receipt. So click on it. We will not receive the PO. I will not drop down and then go to the results. On the show task, drop down and then go to the results. We are going to make a result. So, go to the so we are going to make a result. So before we make a result, the data access has to be given. There are four data access which is required. I will now right click and then duplicate. We have to give four data access for doing an activity on the inventory. Actually. And click on it. So there are four data access required. And click on setup and maintenance. And then I will now provide all the four data access actually. Click on it. I will now go to the search. Now. I will now go to the manage data access. Manage percentage. Data percentage. Access percentage. So I go to the manage data access. It is manage data access for users. Now click on it. I will now see how many data access are given. So move the radio button from users without data access to users with the data access. I will now go there. I will now put my user. Now. G71. So give a tab. I will now use EMP1 actually. Right. Click on search. You now see how many data access we are given. So here we are given what the inventory manager for G71 and then G72. So in the inventory area, three more data access has to be given. I am going to give it. So, go there. so click on plus. I will now give three more data access. So, go there. so G71. <clears throat> so go there EMP1. If you have not given the data access for the receiving agent actually. Fine. Receiving agent I will not give up. Then I cannot receive at all. I will not go there. Show it. Next place. Whatever. I go to the receive expected shipments. Click on the G71 one. Fine. Click on the receive expected shipments. Fine. So I have not given the receiving agent data access at all. So here, what happens? The organization is not coming at all. On the receive expected shipments, what happens? The organization itself will not come. Whereas it came on the inventory. I click on done now. If you go there, if you click on done now. Fine. If you go to this place, fine. If you go to inventory, in the inventory, if you go to the manage item quantities, 
it is coming into. So here, if you click on change organization, we can very well change it to what? One of these two organizations, basically. Fine, G71 is in number. Whereas in the receiving, we cannot do anything at all because we don't have a data access. So go directly on it. If you go on and drop it down and then go to the results. <clears throat> if you go to the receive expected shipments, we don't have any change organization at all. So we cannot query our PO at all. So go there. If you go on and put my query or purchase order number as what, 2000, and then make a search, it will not be visible at all. It is not visible at all because we don't have a data access actually. So inventory needs four data access actually. So I'm not going to give the data access. So is the receiving agent. I will not give a cancel now. I'll again do it. So click on plus number. Plus. Go there. Is it G71? Go there. So EMP1. Fine. It is a receiving agent. Fine. Receiving agent. And I'm giving it now. Receiving agent. And then go there. And then for the inventory or For the inventory or So I'm now doing it only the first or First or is sufficient for the staging. So click on plus no point. Then to deliver it into the inventory, we need a warehouse manager data access. The G71. I will not choose EMP1. Is a warehouse manager data access is required for delivering it. So warehouse manager. So go there. Inventory manager. G71. I'm not doing for the second org, only for the first org. I'm doing it now. And then I will not duplicate it. So there is a duplicate icon. Thank you for duplicate it. And then one is a shipping manager. So duplication, and then one of the shipping manager. <clears throat> so drop down, I will not choose the shipping manager. So the shipping manager. Where the shipping manager is not there at all, I have not given the role at all. The role is missing. Otherwise, what happens, that is required for advanced level, actually, right? for ship the product to the customer. So I have not given the role at all, and leave it as So these are the four roles. Fine. I will not clear it, actually. Fine. I have not done it. For this training, I think, not required, so I have not done it. So otherwise, what happens? The receiving manager, warehouse manager, shipping manager, and then the inventory manager are the four roles, four data access which are required. So click on search now, fine. Go there. You can see this. Receiving agent, warehouse manager, shipping manager, and the inventory manager are the four data access which is required for every inventory org. Can somebody say yes to me that you understood it? These are the four data access which are required. Shipping manager is required for shipping the product as well as for there is a movement request is there. For the movement request also, we need a shipping manager actually. We are not doing it in this training, so that's why I'm not giving it actually. Can somebody say yes to me that the uh, data access for part of it now? Anybody has understood it? Can you say yes to me? Yes, sir. Good. 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 Yes, sir. Now, I will now go to the receiving and go there. So click on the no point. No, the change organization has to come or otherwise the G0, G71 one has to come automatically. So we'll not go there technology. I will now go to what receipts and then click on the receive expected shipments. My G71 one has to come automatically here now. So oh God, it is not coming. So then what I will do? If it's still not coming, what I will do? Anybody? <clears throat> it's still not coming. What I will do? Yeah. Retrieve latest uh, LDAP. No, no, no. Not the LDAP. Sign out, sign in, sign out, sign in. Sign out, sign in is very correct now. <laughs> <laughs> if you sign out and sign in, it will be coming. So whenever something is, whenever you made a setup and then it is not immediately coming, what happens? Sign out on it. So LDAP is basically whenever you make a lot of setups, then what happens? You run it. Otherwise, what happens? Sign out and sign in itself will not. If it's still not coming, then you have to go on and do the LDAP. It's not enough. Fine. So I will now go to what? Again, supply chain execution. I will now go to the supply chain execution. And then I go to the inventory management. And go there. <clears throat> I will now go to the receive and give the results. And then click on receive expected shipments. Now you can see the org is coming. If I change org, how many org will come in the list? Anybody? If I click on the change org. How many orgs will come? Anybody? Only one. Only one. Two will come or not? One, G one. Only one will come. Fine. Very good. JD is very good because we are given receiving agent only for one org. Fine. Receiving agent has been given only for one org. So only one will come. Not possible at all. Got enough. I go there. So you go there. So click on it. Receipts and then click on receive expected shipments. Now I will now query the purchase order number 2000. So 2000 in the PO. Fine. Go there. So click on search. It will be coming over there. Fine. We go to make a search. So select it. And then here, what I've uh, got what I've got five commodities are there. Fine. Select it. And in the requisition, we have five commodities. That is why it's not showing you five. Fine. Click on receive. So click on receive. So it is not showing you this one. Now I am going to receive three. The supplier has now supplied only three. Can go that quantity. So click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show how much is expected from the supplier actually. 
click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show you how much is expected from the player. So five is expected. I'm going to make a change to three now. I'm going to make a change to three now. <clears throat> so receipt quantity, what happens? It will not show that five is expected from player. Uh, now the supplier has supplied only three. So I'm going to make a change to three now. Thank you, Mr. Receipt quantity. It will not show you how much is expected. Now I have to put away now. So the next step is what? Put away. Thank you. So I will not go there. I will not change it. Fine. Click on three. So click on create receipt by which what happens? We are now creating a GRN. It's called goods receipt note in the gate actually. In the gate, we are now making a receipt note. Thank you. So we will now fill up the shipment number as one, two, three. And then the packing slip number is so and so. Thank you. Shipping method, if there is anything defined, it can be now. Otherwise, what happens? Not there. The Baby bill number is this one. And then the bill of lighting number is this one. Fill up everything. Fine. Whatever is meaningful, you give it to. And then the moment you submit it, for three commodities, a GRN number will be created. Thank you, Consumer. It's called goods receipt note. Thank you, Consumer. Your goods receipt note will be created. Then that GRN number, I have to deliver it to the inventory. That is called put away. 4001, while we are creating the receiving parameters, we are given the start number as 4000. So the next number is now given to us. So 4001 is a GRN number, goods receipt note number. We have to deliver it now. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what is the data access which is required for delivery? Anybody? I click on it. I'm not going to perform a put away. So for a put away, what is the data access which is required? Anybody? For receiving it, the receiving agent data access is required. For a put away, warehouse, warehouse, manager. warehouse manager is very correct. Fine. Warehouse manager. Fine. Click on the put away. The warehouse manager is already being given. Fine. Click on it. So put away. The warehouse manager is already given. Fine. Go there. So it is not coming. Otherwise, what happened? This number itself will not come here. So go there. What is the receipt number? Anybody? 1001 or 2001? What is the receipt number? Anybody? 4001. 4001 is very correct. <laughs> 4001. Who has told 4001? Who is this? Very good. Thank you. So go there. Click on search and find. So 4001 is the GR number. Thank you. That's it. And then we are going to make a put away. Thank click on put away. So we are now putting away. So we are now performing a put away. We are putting away. Remember, we are now doing it from the requisition area. Find G71. So click on submit. These three items are now completed actually. So the put away is now created. It is now delivered to the inventory. We'll now go on and have a look at the stock. Thank you. We'll now go on and look at the stock. Thank you. We'll now go to the, go to the inventory. Go to the inventory. And then have a look at the stock. And click on the manager and quantities. We'll now query for this one. <clears throat> this is what G71 is one. And then give it a. So there is a laptop. So click on search. We'll now find three laptops are available on the inventory. 1000 is already created. We now made a miscellaneous receipt actually. So click on it. No so click on it. The organization and expand it. We'll now show the sub inventory. So, so, we can even see what are the transactions we have made today. Now, thank you. Now, see what are the transactions we have made. Click on it. We'll now go there. Go to the what happens? Review completed transaction. On the inventory area, go to the review completed transaction. It will not show you what are the transactions I made it to. Item is what? G71 1 and give it up. The item will be fully populated actually. Fine. So, this is for today's date only. So, what happens? Only for today's date. I click on search. And search for it today. What are the transactions I made? I made only one receipt now. Fine purchase order receipt actually. If you go on then search for a larger period, I go there. Don't go there. I will not say two, 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 two. It's a larger period. I go there. The thousand quantity which I received also will not show. So one year before from here, fine. Click on search now. Fine. So if you give it fine, thousand quantities has been received as a miscellaneous receipt that is also coming as inventory. This is a purchase order. Also. So we can modify the search criteria and then query. So this is extensively used by the inventory people about how much of transactions they have made on a particular item in the past one week or two. So that shows how many in and then how, how many outs. And then he will now represent to the management that what happened, the volume is so huge. So we need more people for managing the inventory. So these reports, they will now make it and then send to the management that our inventory volume handling is very huge. And then with my four inventory boys, I cannot manage the inventory. He will now ask for more. Actually. So, and this is also used for other analysis also. So the review completed transactions over a period of time will be very useful used. Fine. Item specific or org specific. If you don't put the item, what happens? It will not show all the items in this org actually. Fine. Now we have to pay the supplier for the three quantities. Thank you. We have to pay the supplier. So go there. We will not go there. We will not see whether a payables role has been added or not. We will not go to the payables. We will not go to the payables. We will not go to the payables. Something. We so we will not see whether payables rule has been added or not. Payables there. Thank you for payables. Now, before you make a payment, there is one more setup which is required. I will not go to the payables dashboard. I will not go to the invoice. Payables, I will not click on the invoice. 
So before you make it, what happens is one more setup is required. So if that is not done, we cannot create an invoice of the supplier actually. Supplier has not given an invoice for three commodities. It is not possible. Thank you. That is not coming. Thank you. That. So what we had to do is uh, we have to do the <clears throat> we have to do them. So I will not click on the home icon. Fine. Before you go to the payables invoice, man, go to the setup and maintenance. And then here we are now going to make one. More. So let's set up and maintenance. We'll go there. Fine. Click on it. I will not click on search. No, fine. Click on search. So sorry. <clears throat> here, what happens? Uh, it's called manage invoice options and financials. I will not go to the financials. I will know how to what? Set up the manage invoice options. Manage personal fine. Invoice personal fine. Options personal. Fine. I will not go on and set up the manage invoice options. Fine. Scope is not there. Fine. For the manage invoice options. Fine. Click on scope selection. And then drop it down. Select an ad. Fine. Click on apply and go to ask. You're going to select. So go there. So here I will now query my G71. And then click on search. No, fine. Click on search. I'm searching for it now. I will not select it in the return side. I will not give a save and close. Click on save and close. Which what happens? We now go into the invoice options. No, fine. This will be fully explained in the financial training, actually. So what I do is I will now make a payment currency as US dollars. Fine. Pay group as standard now. And then give it a no, standard. No, fine. No, fine. So everything else is really already filled up. Fine. Leave it as such. No, fine. So it is immediate, it's okay. Fine. No, fine. Here also, what happens? We have immediate, which is a mandatory fine. That is also okay. Fine. No, fine. So here payment terms also will not make it as immediate. So whatever is a mandatory field, I'm filling it up. This will be fully explained on the financial training. So this completes the invoice options is now getting set. Any doubt on this now? Fine. The remaining are already set. Fine. This will be learning it fully in a financial study. So click on save and close. Now we can very well create an invoice for this. Now. No doubt. So go there. No doubt. So now having done the manage invoice options, fine. Click on the home icon. You click on the home icon. Now, what happens? You go to the payables and then click on the invoice. So click on the invoice. I'm not going to the invoice. So click on it. I will not make an invoice. Click on it. I will not go there. Click on create invoice. From the task list, what happens? You click on it. I will not go on then. Click on the create invoice. I'm not going to create an invoice. So click on create invoice. I'm not going to create an invoice. <coughs> go there. So here, what happened? The P1 number is what? You go there and then click on 2000. 2000, I'm going to click on. I keep on writing it. It will be coming automatically. So is it our supplier or not? Anybody? Is it my supplier or not? Somebody can answer me. Whether A01 supplier is my supplier or not? No, no, no. no. So in that case, what, click on more now. Fine, click on more. So it's not showing me my supplier at all. Fine, go there. So click on search now. Fine, it has to show my supplier actually. So go there. So which is my supplier? The second one is mine now. Fine, not the first one. I will not choose the second one and then click on OK. So choose the second one and then click on OK. So by which, what happens? Your PO is now getting populated again. So click on it. The, our PO is coming. Our sub business unit is coming. Supplier is coming. Everything is coming. I will now give a number as what? 1001. Amount three three quantities. What is the price I have given? Ten dollars, I think. I find thirty dollars. I not believe. So I am not going to match it and then obtain the distribution. So the amount in the invoice is this. No, fine. Click on the match. Click on match. I'm going to give a match. Fine. There is one. Fine. Attribute accounting date. You must provide the invoice date and accounting date. No, fine. So that means what? One more setup is missing actually. Fine. Attribute accounting date. I forgot that one. Fine. Anybody? No, no. Uh, I think. Uh... In the invoice header, you can uh, uh, in the side, you can see that the show more. Uh, just click on the show more. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, but if that is set, it will be coming automatically. That's okay. But there is one more yes, setup Nana. missing. Uh, I have forgotten that actually. Fine. The show more, it is okay. But uh, what happens? It has to come automatically. I forgot on that. No, fine. What is the setup here? Fine. Some setup is required. So that will be doing it now. Fine. I will not go there. I will not go to the place. Fine. I will not go to the what's called uh, manage common options. Is okay. Fine. Invoice options is okay. One more setup is missing now. Fine. Click on setup. Uh, manage common options. Fine. Manage common options. I will not go there. Manage common options for payables and procurement. Payables for payables. So manage common options for payables and procurement. There is one setup which is missing. It looks so fine. G71. And then give a tap for the business unit. You now see. Everything is there actually. Fine. The liability account is there. Fine. Everything is there actually. What is missing here? I don't know. <laughs> Some 
right? I will not remove this expense account of it, liabilities, okay, and the expense account will be removed from it. Because some extra things also may be given to us. So the built location is also okay, fine. Right? Everything is proper actually. Right? All the mandatory accounts only has to be filled. The bank account safe and close is not done. Right? Come on, anybody? Fine. We go to the create invoice. Okay, I will not go to the show more. Otherwise, what happens? It will not ask you that question at all. I will not go to the show more. No, I on the show more. In this place, what happens? It is now saying that, ah, I got it. I got it. I got it. So the periods must be open actually. If the periods are not open, it will not allow you at all. Fine. We have to open the periods actually. So click on it. So we have to open the periods. Fine. That's why we are unable to create an invoice. Fine. We will not open the periods. I will not go to the general accounting and then we will not open the periods. So I will not go to the what's called period close. Fine. Click on the period close. I have to open the periods actually. That is a mistake. Is it now done? So go there. So my ledger itself is not coming. So we have to give a data access for our GL actually. Thank you. The data access is not coming. Thank you. Okay. I will not go to the place. I will not give a data access. So go to the manage. Right. Manage percentage. Fine. Data percentage. Access percentage. So go to the manage data access for users. So we have to give data access for this. If you go to the users with data access and then query for your user, now find G71. And then give a tap. So for the first user, click on search. Fine. We have to give a data access for opening the periods. Remember, inventory and purchasing do not have any periods, whereas financials are having a period. Fine. Click on plus. So click on plus. I then go there. I will not give a data access. G71. I will not say user one, EMP1. It is a general accountant. So go there. I will not go to the general accountant. When general accountant, go there. I will not drop down. I will not say data access it. Go there. G71. G71, I'm getting it fine. Click on duplicate now, fine. Click on duplicate. It is a general accounting manager. So we have to give two data access for opening the periods for the GL and P payables now. I drop it down. I will not go there. So it is what general accounting manager. And then go there. I will not say data access it. Then go there. G71. So both of them, the data access set has to be given. Clear on this now, fine. General accountant and general accounting manager, actually. This is the general accounting manager. So general accounting manager, zero. So click on save and close. Now we are given a data access now. Now you log out and log in. Fine. Whenever such a major changes now happen, whatever you go on and log out. So go there, sign out and sign in. Sign out, and then you'll not sign in. Sign in. <clears throat> you're not signing in. Now, if you go there, your data access you will be coming now. Fine. Go to the GL now. Fine. You go to general ledger. I'm now working on EMP1, remember. EMP2 is a purchase officer. He will not do any receipts at all. He will not only make a PO, whereas EMP1 will now create a requisitioning as well as receiving also, as well as the payments, everything you'll know. Because he is called the client, what happens, he's from the client. And then the EMP2 is a service provider actually. So go there, so click on it. We'll now go to what? General accounting. And then I will now go to the period close. Now your GL, your, this thing will be coming. Your ledger will be coming here, opening it. Previously, what happened? This was not coming at all. This was blank actually. Fine, there's no coming. Fine. General ledger is never open. Fine. So click on this one now. Fine. Click on the general ledger. We are going to open the period. Now. So go there. So click on first period is January 23. Fine. Click on OK. So click on it. Fine. We'll now open up January. Fine. Click on yes. Fine. We are opening the first period actually. So now the concurrent is now submitted. Fine. Click on refresh. It will not show you the period getting open. The period is now getting open. Fine. January is open. And then February is in future actually. You can see February is in the status is in future. I will not go to actions and then go to open target period. Open target period. So go there. So first period is now open, fine. Click on the open target period. Let us know open up to what? Let us say no May up to June will now open. Fine. Up to June 23, I'm going to open up. Click on open. So we are opening up to June 23. This will now open up all the periods from January to fine. One go, I can open up everything. This uh, this ESS job is submitted. Fine. Refresh it. Refresh it. So up to June, it will be open. Refresh it. There is a refresh icon here and keep on refreshing it. So once when the period opening gets completed, it will now see up to June, it will be opened actually. March is now getting open. Now you can see up to June is now open. Up to June is open. Now on the main area, it will now say the GL is open. The main GL. Now we will now open the payable period. Now. So the GL was never opened actually. Like projects is never open. Receivable is never open. GL was also never open. Now it is open up to May now. May is open. Well, the May month is open. Now payables is never open for GL. Click on it. I will now open it up. Thank you. So click on the payables. Over. So the first period, if it dropped down, what happens? I am not getting January 23. <clears throat> I have to get January 23. In this case, what I have to do? Anybody? January 23 has to come now. And that must be the first period actually. 
if you make a july notary then we cannot open any periods before july at all so what i have to make for bringing the first period as january 23 anybody very simple what i have to do i have to bring in january 23 over here now fine first period is not january 23 what i have to do come on everybody knows it but nobody is answering me you need to select huh? no you are unable to select here you are unable to select here then what i have to do so you have to search and add no search and add log, log, uh, isaac is saying log, come on log, 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 isaac isaac tell me something you are saying something tell me tell me isaac tell me mm. Log out and log in. Very good, fantastic. I said log out and log in. Nigerian man has passed. The Nigerian man has passed. You had to log out and log in now. Fine, good, good, good. So Isaac has passed it. Whenever such a thing happens, what happens? We are unable to select the period. Fine, take on it. Your first period is not coming as what? As January twenty three. Log out and log in. It will come now. Fine, remember. That is why whenever a major change happens, what happens? We had to log out and log in. Beautiful, Isaac. Fine, excellent. That means what? He is closely following it. Even though he is finding difficulty in understanding my English, but even then he is following it up. Excellent. So click on sign in now. <clears throat> Isaac, are you able to follow my pronunciation? Because we Indians will speak a very high speed. Actually, you are still able to. I'm trying. 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 <laughs> now go there. I will not go to what general ledger. No, thank you. I will not go to general ledger. He will now run it again and again. I think probably then only you will understand it. Actually, it's a very difficult thing. Go to the place. I will not go to what general ledger. Fine, general accounting. I will not go to the period close. Fine, go to the. I will not open up the payable period. Go to the payable period. Now January twenty three will come. Go to the. So drop it down. Now January will come. Aya, when did she? Fine, click on again. It is not done. Fine, it is now giving a warning. Fine, doesn't matter. Any warnings can be ignored now. Fine, be honest. All warnings can be ignored. So the concurrent is now submitted. Fine, refresh it. Can I refresh it? <laughs> can I refresh it. So January is now getting open now. Fine. January is now getting open. <clears throat> now February will open. So January is open now. You go to actions and then go to open target period and then drop it down. I will now open up to June. I know. Fine, June. And then click on open. I am opening up to June. Fine. Fine. So no, no, fine. This is now concurrent is again submitted. Fine, oh, refresh now. Fine, I am refreshing it. So once when you refresh it, what happens? It will now refresh, refresh, and then come out now. So up to this, everything is open now. Now what happens? You preferably log out and log in. All the periods are open. Fine, there is no log out and log in. I am now logging out of the EMP one, who is a requester as well as a receiver actually. So requester and receiver will also what happens? It will now create a what's called the waivers invoice. In reality. There will be a separate guy who will be grading it, but you are given the what happens accounts payables specialist and then supervisor and then uh, manager. Fine, so that's why we are able to do everything. Otherwise, what happens? You'll be having a separate people to do this invoice. I will not go there. I will not go to the payables and then go there. I will not go to the invoice. This time it will not show any error at all. Thank you. That the error came now. Fine, it will not come at all. Click on it. I will not go to the what create invoice. Let me put my P1 number over here now. Fine, click on it. I will not put the P1 number over here. So go there. So is it two thousand? So two thousand is the one fine. This is not the one fine. Click on more than choose enough. This is not supplier. Fine. Click on more than choose your supplier now. Fine. Click on search now. Fine. Choose your supplier. Choose your line. So this is my line and not this two thousand actually. Fine. Click on okay. No coming. Go there. <coughs> it is no coming. Fine. Go there. So invoice number is one thousand one. Fine. Go there. Come on. Amount is thirty dollars. Fine. I think it's a ten dollars per unit now. Fine. I'm not remembering it. Fine. I will not click on the match. Now this time it will not show any other wrong. Fine, click on match. It will be going up. Fine, because all the periods are open. The GL period and then the payables period must be open before you create an invoice. Actually, it's not showing you everything. Select it. Select it. And the quantity is three now. Fine. So quantity ordered is five. Available for match is three. Fine. That means what we have received three and then we are now doing it. Click on. So it's not. But normally taxes and other things will be applicable. But since this location will not have any tax, it's okay. Otherwise, what happens is we have to add the taxes also. Fine, click on apply. So once when you click on apply, what happens? You cannot see this will be getting matched with the header amount. It will be along with the taxes actually. Hmm. Now since I have not configured any taxes, what happens? Nothing will be coming. Fine, go there. Come on, apply. So we are now applying it now. Fine. So click on apply. So click on OK now. Fine. Apply after click on apply. Going over. Yeah. It's all coming. So go there. So click on save now. Fine. Now there are other things. Uh, the freight, miscellaneous taxes, everything is there. Fine. Those components are not there actually. Fine, go there. 
So click on save now, fine, brother. So click on save and now it'll be getting saved actually. Now we are going to validate this invoice actually. So click on it, we are going to validate it. So $30 is now coming from that. So it is not validated. I will now go there and then validate it. So I'm going to actions then. Go to invoice actions and go to validate. So it will get validated. But since taxes are not there, uh, I don't know how to what happens, uh, do the setup of taxes actually fine. You under, undergo a training on finance, they will not teach you. Now it will go to validate. It will not go to validate actually. So you can see it is valid. So this is the last part of this P2P cycle where the invoice is validated. It is ready for a payment actually. Go there, click on it. We can now pay in full actually. But since I am not aware of it, I am not going to it. So you have to, everybody has to succeed up to validate. Now, the invoice number is what? 1000. But this is not the way we normally do it actually. Not the way we are going to do it. So how it will be done in industry, I will tell you. I will not tell you how it is being done in industry. I will not go there. Right click on the duplicate. I will not open up the supplier. And then tell you how the invoice numbers are generated. Actually. So click on it. I will not go to the procurement now. Fine. So that is not the 1001. I have now manually done it. But that will not be the way it will be done. So I will not go to the procurement now. Fine. Go to the procurement. I will not go to the suppliers now. Fine. Click on suppliers. Let me go to the suppliers. So go there. I will not go to the managed suppliers now. Fine. Click on it. I will not go to the managed suppliers. Click on the managed suppliers. Is the G71 is the one? G71. And then click on search now. Fine. Click on search. I am now searching for it. I will not select it. I don't know. We go there. Click on the hyperlink of it. So here, what happens? I will now go to the what's called the sites. Click on the sites. I go to the sites area. Oh God! Oh God! It will not be visible. Tell me why this is not visible here now. <laughs> He's not a procurement agent. He is not a procurement agent. Is hundred percent correct actually? Fine. So I have to query on the other one now. Fine. He is not a procurement agent. EMP two. In EMP two, I have to query. So I am in EMP two. Fine. Click on the home icon. So here. I have to query on this one, right? In the EMP, what happens? You go there, you go to the procurement, I go to the supplier. So I will tell you what, how the normal way of uh, processing a supplier will not take place. I will not go to what? Manage suppliers. G71. G71 is the one. Fine. Click on search. So click on search. I will not search for it. Fine. Here, what happens? I will not go to what? EMP2 is a purchase officer. So there, the sites will be visible. Only for the purchase procurement officer will be visible. Go there. So click on it. On the sites, I'm editing it. I will not click on edit and go that. I will not go to the purchasing area. Click on the purchasing area. We normally make a payment upon receipt actually. So is what is the pay on receipt? I will not enable the pay on receipt. And then here, what happens? The invoice summary level will be what? I will not say packing slip. This is the way normally people do it. Invoice summary. And then here, what happens? I will not go there. So there is a tick mark. Create debit memo from return. So, but in fact, what happens, uh, this is a very, uh, very important one. And then sometimes what happens, uh, the supplier will not agree for creating a debit memo. A debit memo will now reduce our liability, remember, to the supplier actually. So, we are now going to make a payment upon receipt actually. And then the packing slip number will be the invoice number actually. Please remember, I go to the purchasing tab region. I put a tick mark on the pay and receipt. Fine, go the invoice summary level is packing slip. And then I'm putting a tick mark on the create debit memo from return. Fine, I made these changes. One and then what happens? There? Two and then three changes I made. Got it? So click on seven. There are so many other things are there. They will all be explained in the purchasing training. In the purchasing training, we'll be explaining it. So it's what is. So I'm not doing only pay on use is a different concept that will be explained in the purchasing training. Fine with that. Since it is an introduction, we are not covering too much now. Fine. So pay on zip and then packing slip and then what the packing slip will be the invoice number actually. The packing slip will be the invoice number. So click on seven close. So I have now modified on the purchasing area on the sites. Clear? Any doubts? I modified this. Uh, sir, why yeah. it is like uh, packing slip? So, yeah. It is the normal philosophy of a packing slip because we are going to pay on every packing slip actually. So once when the packing slip has arrived, then you will now be paying on a packing slip only. Many industries follow this. Okay, fine. What is fine? Not on invoice. Not on supplier invoice. Sub, not on supplier invoice, but on packing slip of the invoice, supplier's invoice. That is the usual practice, basically. Fine. On the usual. Fine. So click on fine, save and close. Now, having made these changes, what I'm going to do is I will again log out and log in. I will not go there. So I will not go there. I will not log out and log in. So many major changes, you always log out and log in for the changes to take up. And I am in a purchase officer's login now. Fine. Click on sign in. Now, let us not duplicate the purchase order of 2000. Let us now duplicate the purchase order. 
I will not go to the procurement. <clears throat> uh, go to the procurement, no fine. I will not make a new order, no fine, because what I mean, the changes are made, no fine, click on the purchase orders. Let me create a manual order, no fine. I'm not going to convert anything, I'm not going to make a manual order. So click on it. I will not go there and then make a manual order. Go to the create order. I'm not making a manual order, actually. I'm not duplicating it because that pay on receipt has to come automatically away, no fine. So it's all coming. So it's coming. Supply is what? G71. I'm now making a manual PO now. Thank you, Connect. Supply set, everything supply contract will be coming. Thank you, Connect. So once we're going to do it, what happens? You can now see that create the pay on receipt will be coming automatically. This supplier is eligible for a pay on receipt. That means what? As soon as we receive, we can very well pay because he's a very renowned supplier. Thank you, The pay on receipt is coming from the supplier set up. <coughs> so I'll go there. I will not go to the plus symbol. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not put the item over here. Go there. Item is what? G71. I will not put the G71. I will not say the laptop. So everything is coming. And already the price also will be coming. And the item attribute. Item attribute. We have given a price of 10 actually. There's no more. So the category name, everything is coming. So everything is coming for that. I will not go for 10 quantities. So quantities, what? 10 quantities. 10 quantities are given. So go there. So here, what we have to do is in the schedules, we have to make one more in the schedules when we want, right? When you are making a manual PO, you go to the schedules and then here you have to say when we want it actually. There are two things are there. One is what? Requested delivery date or promised date. One of the date is a mandatory one. If you don't give it, I give a save. If you give a save, it will not say the dates are missing actually. If you give a save, then only it will not say the dates are missing actually. So you will not go to the actions and then go to validate. If you give a valid, it will not say the dates are missing. Fine. So you say you must enter a requested date or a promised date. Fine. This is a must actually. So let us now go there and then give the dates. Go there. Go down. In the schedules, what happens? One of the dates is a mandatory. Fine. Go there. I will not say I want it today itself. Put today's dates. So give us same. Now, if you go and then validate, go to actions and go to validate. Fine. It will not say any errors upon. It will not show any errors upon. So here, there will not be no error. No errors upon. If you go to the distribution, you will see the, all the three accounts are ready now. The distributions and then go there, click on edit now, fine. Because we already set up the distribution account, right? We already set up the distribution. So, for that, so the charge account is coming, the variance account is coming, and then the accrual account is also coming. Click on it. Now, we'll now submit this for, uh, uh, for payment. 2001, I'm going to submit it. I click on submit now. We already set up the automobile, fine. Go there, you'll be getting submitted. Now, we will now go to the requesters area and then we will now try to receive it now. And 10 coins we're going to receive now, right? <clears throat> So, Pay on receipt is enabled actually. Pay on receipt is enabled. So we'll now go to the requester's login. So go there. So click on down. I'm in the requester's login of what? EMP1. I'm in the EMP1's login. EMP1 login. Now what happens? I go there, go to the supply chain management. Go to that what's called. I will now go to what? Supply chain execution. I will now go to the supply chain execution, then go to the inventory. So 2001, I'm going to receive. That is say the supplier has now supplied six quantities. So go to the place, go to the receipts. So click on the receive expected shipments. I will now say 2001 is the PO. Now it is under approval. Thank you, tab. Now we will now see whether it is approved or not. Not at approval. 2001. We have to wait till it gets approved. So once it is approved, now it is now available. Thank you, Connor. So click on OK. It's now approved. So click on search. Now he has supplied six quantities of this. Now click on it. I will now make a result. So click on result. So this is called pay or is it fine? If you click on the receive quantity, it will now show you 10. I am now going to receive only six. I'm not going to change it. So click on create result. So go there. So click on result. Now the supplier has now supplied a packing slip. Click on result. So the packing slip number will be the invoice number. The packing slip number, I will now say Nana123. So this is the packing slip number. So it is a customary practice in every industry, fine? every manufacturing industry, that whenever you receive a supplier's pack with a packing slip number, so this will now form part of your invoice numbering. This will now form part of your invoice number. Click on submit. So invoice numbering will be auto-created and then that will, this number will be forming part of the invoice number. Invoice numbering has got three parts. Fine. Click on submit now. It will be have three parts. Fine. The packing slip number is one part actually. So click on it. So 4002 GRN number is now created. Fine. Go there. So packing slip number is nana underscore one two three. Fine. Go there. So let us now go there and then deliver it. Fine. Click on the button and now deliver it. So go there. Click on it. We will now go on and deliver it. Fine. Go to the put away now. Fine. Click on the put away results. And then 4002 is the GRN number. 4002. Fine. So make a search for it now. Fine. Click on search. Then select it and then click on put away. You're going to put away the entire six. 
So click on submit. Maybe it's what happens. It will, you have to choose the sub-inventory now. Right? In this place, the sub-inventory has to be chosen because it is now what happens is manually created actually. I will not put it on the sub -inventory. Accordingly, the accounts will be hit. So once we put the sub-inventory, the accounting will be hit based upon whatever sub-inventory you're choosing it. And then this will now come into picture now. So what are we seeing? And all these six will be coming into All the eight will be coming into the picture. Actually. <laughs> based upon this, the charge account will be getting hit down. So click on submit. So the put away transaction is now completed. Now we have to push it into payables actually. Right? We have to push it into payables. So we have to push it into payables. So you click on the home icon and then click on the home icon. And then here, what happens? You go to the tools. You go to the tools. You go to the tools. And then here, you go to the scheduled process. Now we have to push this 4002 GRN number into payables actually. So click on what happens? You go to the tools and then schedule the process. Click on the schedule new process. You are going to schedule it now and go there. <clears throat> Right. It's called send pay and then give it a hand. Send pay for 4002 GRN number. The GRN number is 4002. Send pay on is it? Fine. Click on OK. Go there. Click on it. I don't go there. Transaction source is what? Evaluated receipt settlement is called ERS invoice. Right. It's called ERS. Evaluated receipt settlement. What is that? Okay. Commitment interval is what one? And then receipt number is what? 4002. 4002 and then give it a hand. Aging period. Fine. Go there. You have to choose the appropriate one. Remember. So yeah, there are got multiple 4002s are there, fine. So the, this is ours now, fine. Which is the years you have to choose now, fine. Choose yours, fine. It is, not, it is not SLK, it is not T01, it is G71, fine. Click on OK. So for which we are now pushing the data into payables actually, fine. So the system will now create, auto create an invoice now, fine. The system will be auto creating an invoice. Refresh it, fine. Send to pay on zip is now going to auto create an invoice. The system will be getting an auto invoice. So send me on zip, it will be creating an auto invoice automatically. So importing of invoice has started actually. Fine. This has got succeeded. And then the import payables invoice has started. And then it will be giving an automatic invoice. So that is running now. Fine. So once when it's completed, it will now give a report also. So once when the invoice is created, fine. It is a usual practice of many, many industries where the supplier's packing slip number will form part of the invoice so that whatever they can very well track whether that particular payment, the packing slip is paid or not. They can very well track it actually. In Gulf, they use only the packing slip number as an invoice number. So now the payables invoice is now succeeded. The report is running. It will now go there and then query for them. So click on cancel. Now. Click on cancel. Mm -hmm. Cancel. And then we will now query for them. So click on it. We will now go to the manage invoices. They don't go to the manage, not to create invoices, they don't go to the manage invoices. The invoice would have been created by no, no. I click on manage invoices. And then here, what happened? The supplier, I will not put the supplier for it. Fine. The G71. Give it a so on the supplier name, I'm going to query now. On the supplier name, I'm going to query in fine. Supplier name and number, fine. Click on search now. It will show you all the invoices which have been created for the past three days. We can even see for the, how many days actually. Fine. Three days is sufficient. Fine. Click on OK. <coughs> it will not show one manual invoice of 1001 we have created. <coughs> And then now it is validated. <coughs> now uh, ERS invoice is coming. <coughs> this is a Nana 123 and then iPhone 1 actually. This prefix also we can change now. <coughs> I will tell you about how to change the prefix. Right click and then duplicate. We are going to change the prefix also. We have to calm now. We are going to change the prefix also. The prefix can be changed. I click on it. I won't go there. So go to this place, Frank. Click on it. I will go to the setup and maintenance. And now I'm going to change the prefix of it. So click on it. I will go to the search now. Frank, click on search. And then I will now say manage receiving profiles. So go to the manage receiving profile. So go to the manager, manage receiving profile options. The one fine, click on it. I will not go to the manager receiving profile options. Go there. So here, what happens? I will not search for everything. Fine. There is a prefix. I don't. I don't forgot on the profile name now. Fine. Ah, is an RCB ERS prefix. We select it, and then let us say go there. And then here, I will not change it to what. You know, going it for Tata. No. I will not make it as change it. So now everything will be prefixed as Tata. No. So Tata will be the prefix actually. Tata underscore iPhone. Then a GR number iPhone a running number actually. So, go there. so the prefix has been changed. Right? ERS prefix has been changed. Now, let me receive two more quantities now. 
point. I will not receive two point quantities. So it is not done now. Fine. So the receiving profile has been set now. Fine. Let us now receive two more quantities on this. So right click on the duplicate. You will now receive two more quantities on this. So I have not received two more quantities. Enter in now. I will now receive two more quantities on this. Thank you. I will now go there. I will now go to the home icon. Oh God, I cannot do from this now. I have to go from EMP1 actually. I am an EMP1 only. So I am an EMP1 only. I am an EMP1 only. And go there. So I will now go to the what? I will now go to the supply chain execution. <clears throat> I will now go to the supply chain execution. I will now go to the inventory management. In this place, if you see, if you click on the hyperlink, what happens? It is not validated actually. And if you click on the hyperlink on the invoice, we have to validate it actually. So the system has created for three only 60 invoices. Now, fine. It is not validated actually. I will not go there. Action not validated. You go to actions and go to validate. Upon validation, it becomes eligible for a payment actually. Actions valid. It will now become validated actually. <coughs> It will not get valid. It is not valid. I will not give a save and close and come out because afterwards I don't know how to do it. No, fine. That you have to talk to Isaac. You know about how to process this payments and all. Isaac is a financial guy. Thing. Isaac, are you there? You know about how to process the payments and other things? No, 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 no. I'm not a financial guy. <laughs> You're not a financial guy. Okay. You're not a financial guy. So if there is any financial guy, they will now help you out. Fine. If you want to do it, you can even, if anybody is a financial guy, please put a note on the group actually. And then uh, others who wanted to process the payments and then set it up, and you can even contact them directly. Actually, there may be some financial case available here. They will be helping you. <clears throat> well, it's not done. It's not done. Now, what I'm going to do is I will not go to the inventory management. This time I'm going to receive one. <clears throat> I will not go to the receipts and then go to the receipt. So 2001 is the PO number. So 2001 is the PO number. Thank you. And then click on search. I'm not searching for it. Click on, click on receive. I'm going to receive it. So click on the same. I will now say two quantities and go to the So click on what create a fine. A GRN number gets created. So go there. I am not putting a packing slip number. Sometimes if the packing slip number is not there, the GRN number will now become the invoice number. In this place, what happened? The packing slip number is there. Then the GRN number will be coming if the packing slip number is not put during receiving. I have not put a packing slip number. Fine, click on the same. The GRN number will be forming part of the packing slip. So 4003 will now form part of this, and then the prefix will be Tata actually. The prefix will be done now. So I really expect this move from 4003. So go there, click on that. I will not push it into payables actually. So go there, go to this place. I will not go to what? <clears throat> I will not go to the supply chain execution. And then here, what happens? I will not push it into payables actually. And go to the tools. <clears throat> I will not go to the tools. And then I go to the scheduled process. And click on it. I will not push it into payables actually. What is the concurrent name? Anybody? Please tell me what the concurrent name. Yeah. Send pay on this. Send pay is very correct. Right? Hey, this is Abhinav. Uh, who is this here? Who told me the answer? Vaishnav, no? I forgot the name. Can you again open your mind and speak now? This guy is really very intelligent, actually. Come Sir, Vaibhav uh, Vaibhav Kulkarni. Fine. Beautiful. Fine. Senpe. He is now doing it beautifully. Vaibhav Kulkarni, please announce yourself as a friend of yours. Now, fine. He will be of a great help to you. Thank you. Send pay is the one. Thank you. Come on. Go there. So, click on what evaluate this. What is the uh, zip number? Anybody remembering? 4003, na? am I correct? 4, yes. 4003. Thank you for having 4003. I will not choose what G71. Thank you. Okay. Aging period must be zero. If you put one day, only after one day, it will not get an invoice. Otherwise, it will be getting you. Thank you. Sorry. This time, what happens? The Tata will come and then your 4003 will be coming also. They will all form part of the invoice. Send pay on the thank you. So if packing slip is represented, what happens? Be there. Now we are going to make a return now. Thank you. God. We will not make a return. Thank you. I will not go there. So go to the model process. I will not right click on the duplicate. We are going to make a return. We will not make a return. So let us now make a return on this. So click on it. I will now make a return. So go there. So we'll now make a return. Thank you. Click on it. We'll now go and then make a return. We'll now go to the place. Fine. I will now make a return. So while making a return, what happens is we can very well create a debit memo automatically. The debit memo is going to reduce our liability actually. Supply chain execution. And then I will now go to the what inventory management and then go to work. So in this place, what happens is now already running. Now, you can now see that the invoice is now created or not. So import payables invoice is running. It's okay. We will not go there. We will not perform a return actually. So go there. I will not go to the what inventory. I will not go to the receipts area. Find receipts. And then what happens is create a return now. <clears throat> Where is the return now? Fine. Uh, receive, 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 inspect, put away, current receipts. Fine. The return is here. 
In the bottom, we have a return result. Fine, click on return results. So we are going to return on a particular GRN number now. Right? 4003 is a GRN number. Fine, go that click on it. I will not click on search now. On this, on this one, where we already received two actually. Yeah. We are going to return back one now. On 4003, we are going to return back one now. Fine, click on it. Click on return now. When select it and then click on return, we are going to return only one quantity on this one. We will now return only one quantity on this. So quantity is one, one, and then go there. So what is the reason for the return now? Fine, go there. It is damaged. I will now say the what happens in the RMA number is one to three. So the reasons you have to choose. <clears throat> there is a lookup here. <clears throat> I will now choose it. Fine, go there. It is the rejects or a defective. Fine, go there. So we'll have so many things on this one. Uh, uh, this will be taught in the inventory training about how to create a return reason. And then the tick mark will now automatically create a debit memo. If you remove it, what happens? The debit memo will not be created. We have to only manually create it. So now the system will now automatically create a debit memo. There is no need to run send, send to pay. Send to pay is not required because it is now reducing our liability. So if you click on submit, the system will now immediately create an invoice. So for one quantity, what happens? It will be immediately created. So no need to run send pay at all. Send to pay is required only for payment, but for returns, it will be immediate. The written transaction is created with the debit moment. If you go there, if you go to the manage invoice and then make a search for it, you'll not know, find there will be four invoices here. <coughs> so click on search, you'll not know, find four invoices coming. And click on go now, find there will be four invoices. No, four invoices. So on 4003, iPhone 1 is a return actually. You can now see it's a debit moment. The debit moment. Right? Now, this invoice is now Tata underscore 4003 underscore 1001 actually. So Tata is a prefix, and then 4003 is a GRN number. And go there. And then this is a running number. And this running number also can be controlled. And then uh, you talk to financial guys, they will not see about, they will not tell you about how to control the running number actually. And then afterwards, open it up and then validate it. So, it's not valid. These two things are not valid. So this completes what? Receiving, <coughs> return, and then payables invoice creation. Any doubts? I've gone fast actually, but you, what happens? You slowly do everything. You have to succeed on each and everything. Now, we are going to go for the last topic of the day called expense purchases. We are going to go for the <laughs> last topic <coughs> for the expense purchases. <coughs> Before which, what happens? We had to have one more topic also. Fine, I'll not go to the place. One more topic is there. <coughs> if you go to this place, thank you for it. <coughs> I will not go to the create order. Thank you for create order. One more topic before the expense purchases, actually. Thank you for create order. Go there. I will not put the supplier. G71. One more topic is there. So G71 is a supplier. I'll click on create. <clears throat> so click on create. So here, if you see the ship to location is coming as what? G71 find. That means automatically the org is ours. The ship to location is coming out. This is this location is already tied to the org, and because of which the org will be coming on this. So click on line. I will not populate my expense item. I will not populate my expense item. I will not put the item find over there. The G71 find over there. It is a 04 is an expense item. 04 is an expense item. Right? Zero or not zero for it is, it is four actually. G714 actually. G714 is an expense item. I am putting an expense item over here now. Click on it. I will not go for quantity. Go that so click on it. So here, what happens? You go there <clears throat> and then click on save. I click on save. It is not save. I will not go to the what? Distributions. Now click on the distributions and then have a look at it. It is an expense item. Go that quantity. I will not click on quantity you have to give. Oh, oh no. quantity I will not give. You have quantity of 10. 10 quantities. Fine, click on save now. Fine, there's an expense item. And then I go to the distributions now. Fine, click on the distributions. And then here, go there. So click on edit now. Fine, click on edit. So click on edit. I'm not going to edit it now. Click on edit. And then here, what happens? You cannot see these accounts are coming. So the charge account is 1006 because it's the org level actually. Fine, the org level. Okay. Now tell me if I change the, what happens? The, the sub inventory. Fine, what will be the charge account? Uh, let me change the sub inventory now. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the schedule. I click on the schedule. 1006 is the org level. If you go on and see, fine. So it is the, in the org level, it has picked up the what happened, the charge account actually. The org level has picked up. I go to the schedules, fine. Click on edit. Let me populate the sub inventory over here. The schedules, what happened, the sub inventory, I'm going to put it as what? Expense sub inventory. What will be the account now? Tell me. If I put the expense sub inventory, it is 1004 or 1005 or 1006. Somebody can tell me. If I populate it, if you 1005. 1005 is 100% correct. Fine. It will be 1005. So once when I put as an expense sub inventory, fine, click on OK now. Click on OK. It will be 1005. It will not change from 1006 to 1005. You go to the distributions now, fine, click on the distributions. So click on the distribution. 
over there. So click on what happens. Uh, distribution is irritated. Now it has to become 1005. Fine. So it has not become 1005. What I have to do now? It has to become 1005. Build. Build. Beautiful. Fine. So Jaini Ramu is very good. You go to action, then go to rebuild now. Rebuild accounts, what happens? It will not become 1005. Got it now, fine? Got us. 1005 does not become rebuilding. So click on okay now. Now what happens? I'm not going to make a service purchase now. Thank you. So click on it. So go there. I will not go to the lines area. I will go to the lines area. I will not make a service purchase. Click on plus. I will not make a service purchase. I click on plus. I will not make a service purchase. Now. So here it is not item. It is a description now. Fine. I will not say cable link. Now we have to populate the account of a purchase officer or requester actually. You tell me. Fine. The category is important. I will not say it's the G71. Now tell me, we have to populate the charge account of the purchase officer or the requester. Anybody? Hello. Requester. Requester is 100% correct. Fine. Purchase officer is just a facilitator. So his account will never come at all. Purchase officer. The price is there. So I will not say each. No, I will not put the each. I will not populating everything because it's the description based. I will not put in the category, quantity, units of measures, and then the price, let us say, $2. So the requester name has to be populated now. On this area, we have to populate the requester's name. So only when you populate the requester name, the charge account will be coming automatically on this. So, go there. so the requester's name is not there. So we have to add a column. So go to the view and then go to the columns. The requester name has to be added. Requester. So enable the requester. So the purchase officer is now making a purchase order on behalf of a requester. So go there. So requester's name is getting added. So I will not populate the requester name. So the moment I put the requester name, the charge account will be coming as what now? Tell me. EMP1, comma, G71 underscore. What will be the charge account for this cable link? 1007. 1007 is very correct. Vaibhav Kulkarni has again passed the test actually. So if you put it, what happens? You can now see the account will be 1001, 1007 actually, because employee's expense account will be coming. Fine. Click on save now. I click on save. You have not put the requester name. I, go there. I will not go there. I will not go to the distribution. Then. The account for uh, okay, uh, PO accrual account could not be done. Right? And there is another problem on the accrual account. Right? Anyhow, you know, see the charge account is correct. Right? Accrual, we are unable to create. Right? Accrual is not giving, throwing a problem. Right? Click on it. Okay, no. Accrual is not throwing a problem. And go there. So we will not go to the distribution. Right? Click on it. Accrual is not having a problem. Right? Go to the distribution. And then see whether the 1007 is now coming or not. Right? Click on it. Click on it. On the expense item. Right? Go there. The description based thing over there. So here, what happened? The charge account has to be what? 1007. How come it is 1005 actually? Open first one. Oh, I opened the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. I opened the wrong one. Now. So click on again. I have to open the appropriate one. I opened the wrong one. So click on cancel and then let me open the correct one. I opened the wrong one actually. It is the description based actually. I opened the expense item. Ah, God. It is a 2002 now. Fine, click on OK. Now. Fine, there's some problem coming. Fine, click on OK. Now. So, click on OK. Go down. Now. Fine, I have to open the appropriate one. To keep a cursor on the cable laying second line. Now. On the second line, I'm keeping it now. Fine, click on it. I will not click on edit. <clears throat> I will not click on edit. Go there. So, here, what happens? 1007 is coming. Accrual is not coming. And remember, in this place, in, in requisition area, we can very well override this account on the what happens on the preferences basically on the edit requisition preferences. This facility is not available on purchase orders. We cannot override it. Fine. On a purchase order, if a purchase officer is now creating on a specific requester's name, his expense account can only be the charge account. We cannot override this. Remember, this is possible in requisition that we can override it. Fine. So and again, both are editable. And both term and date are editable on the requisitions as well as purchase order. So the eighth option is not available on the PO. It is available only on the PO, PR actually. It is available only on PR and not on PO actually. Got it? No coming. Now accrual, fine. Expense accrual has to be set. Otherwise, what happens? It will not work. No fine. I will not write, I will not go there. Let us not set up the expense accrual. We have to set up the expense accrual. So that is why what happens here? It is not coming at all. It is not giving at all. Yes. To go there. So click on it. I will not go to the place. I will not. I mean, uh, earn fine. Go there. So here, what happens? I will not go to what? I will not go to manufacturing supply chain management, but I will not go to the procurement. So this time, what happens? I will not go to the procurement and not the manufacturing and supply chain management. I go to the procurement. I go to the procurement. And then here, what happens? I will not go to the management mapping set. So on the procurement, I will not go to the management mapping set. Manage personally fine. Map personally fine. Sip personally fine. Go there. I will not go to the management mapping set of this. So here, what happens? You go to the what's called 
uh, uh, your uh, receipt accounting. So on the receipt accounting, what happens? I am going to set the accrual. I click on it. On the receipt accounting, fine. Click on it now. Oh no, sorry, sorry. When the procurement transaction account, sorry, I am sorry, no vision. Go to the procurement transaction account, fine. Go to the management mapping set of the procurement transaction account, fine. Go to the management mapping set of the procurement transaction. Account. So go there. So here, what happens? The management mapping set will not have a scope at all. When you are on the procurement area, fine. The management mapping set will not have any scope at all. It will not have any scope. So click on the management mapping set, fine. Click on the management mapping set and go there. And then here, what happens? You now go to the board. Expense accrual account business unit. This is the one. Expense accrual account business unit. Fine. It is equivalent to the same in EBIS also. Fine. We have an in the purchasing options, we have an expense accrual. Fine. It is same as like EBIS. So expense accrual account business unit. Fine. Click on it. <clears throat> no, go there. So go there. I will not add my business unit. Fine. Click on plus one. Fine. Let me add the business unit. So drop it down. Fine. Is that G7? Go the entry now. So G7 is the one. Fine. Go there. Come on. The one and click on plus no point. I will go there. Click on plus and then go there. I will not put an account now. <laughs> so expense accrual account. So here, what happens? We are now created one more account on this no point. We have created one more account. Fine, so one more liability. One zero one two. Let me put it. Now. This is an expense accrual. Accrual has to be a liability account. So we have already have one thousand one as a liability. And then one zero one two is also a liability. Let me put this account. So I will go there. So ten iPhone hundred iPhone one zero one two. And then set as a default for all the orgs, all the BUs. Basically. I can set up all the BUs. So the common accrual, expense accrual is going to be common. And click on save and close by which what happens? The expense accrual account at the business unit level for the procurement mapping set. It doesn't have any what happens, any scope at all. It is not done. Now we go to the edit documents, and then here, if you go to the rebuild accounts, you will now find the PO accrual account coming up. Thank you on actions, and then go to rebuild accounts. You will now see 1012 will be coming. And that's it. Got it now, fine. So the charge account can be only employees' expense account as a default account, and then we cannot override that one thousand two point. That is not possible. And then we can very well override it here on the on the PR and PO. Both of things are basically editable actually. And then on a expense purchases, the charge account will now become the variance account also. Whatever charge account is there, that becomes the variance account. Actually. So this is now complete. But my next exercise, I don't have time actually. If I am now running out of time. So I will not see it tomorrow morning. The next morning, tomorrow morning, what happens? The hospital supplies. This is called expense purchases actually, where the destination type is going to be expense actually. Till now, we have seen an inventory destination, <coughs> for which we are now seeing all the four. The fifth one is also same now. So tomorrow we are going to see the expense destination, wherein what happens? We are going to see this hospital supplies. So tomorrow morning we are going to begin with the, the expense purchases, and then afterwards we will not jump into what you are just thinking. Of. Your uh, what's called your uh, uh, your worksheet actually. Fine. Let me open up the worksheet actually. Thank you. So let me open up the worksheet. So I have not gone via the worksheet actually. So go to the place. Thank you. I have not go to the fusion. You will not go to the worksheet actually. PDH worksheet. So I deviated from this because some two three persons have asked, sir, can you give more light on the accounting? So that is why what happens. I deviated from this now. So I deviated from this. So here, what happens? I have not done a simple thing. Fine, seventy-one to seventy-eight is very simple. But since the two, three guys have asked me for the purchasing accounting, so I have now demonstrated the purchasing accounting also, and I made a change on this. Is it clear? So this is now bypassed, and then I have gonna I have made a deep dive into purchasing actually. It has gone fast actually, but what happens? You can even run slow, slow on this. <laughs> So tomorrow morning we are going to see the expense purchases, <coughs> destination is expense, destination expense, and then afterwards we will now jump into product data hub. So do you like this uh, class today's class? Fine, three sessions. If you like it, can you give a green tick now? <coughs> if you like it, you can put it. So Azim liked it. My brother Ismail liked it. Fantastic. Right. There are so many guys who like this session actually. <coughs> Tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening? Tomorrow evening only. Fine. Five thirty p.m. India. Yes, Sripati, is there anything new for you in this one? What is yes, sir. Oh, the second good. session, learning. Uh, learning session. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so at five thirty p.m. India, we will now begin the expense purchases, and then afterwards we will now jump into product data hub actually. Okay, fine. Any questions from anybody? Kishore, is it okay for you?
Kishore was asking right from the beginning, right? <laughs> Nana, you're not even gone to the product data hub at all. <laughs> because of so many reasons, what happens? I have not gone in directly, actually. Kishore, Nana, Nana, one question, sir. Yeah, tell me. The send pay on receipt uh, job is there, right? Yeah. If I have to run for multiple uh, GRN number. Yeah, yeah. If you okay. put a GRN number, it will not run only for that. If you leave it blank, it will not run for all. Actually. Oh, it will run for all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you make it blank, it will not run for all. Actually. Anbu, you have to follow with the people and then uh, clarify the doubts. If they have a doubt, let them also contact me. Right? But they all have to complete all the three sessions of today, actually. That is very, very important, actually. <laughs> then only what happens then? It will be a question, uh, right? So, will you be uh, touch basing the configurator part? No, no, no. How configurator is a very big one. Fine. Configurator is a big one. I will not. Okay. Touch. All right. Big one. Uh, no, 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 I lost the access basically. I was up to like 50 plus by this step and then I lost the access. Uh, I'm not sure like the instance I, I lost it or. Uh... See, I'm working on this now, fine. What is the problem with the instance? Everybody is able to work on it. Uh, okay. You can talk. I'll check again. See ya. Uh, See ya. Are you there? You, you are using the dev 10, right? So the dev 10 got. Problem. Dev 10 has got. Uh, dev, dev 10 is lost actually. Okay. It is lost. So dev 10 is lost. So you work on EQVA, right? This is what, what I'm working now, and you work on the same one. Sure. Okay. Dev 10 is lost, actually. We lost the Dev 10. We work on EQ. That, uh, what is it? Oh, I remember. I don't remember. Right? Whatever I'm working is working, actually. It's a very tough session, actually. Fine with that. Okay, uh, Many of you are liking it, actually. Very good. Yeah. So if any other feedbacks is there, they can get. Otherwise, whatever, they'll not call it a day, actually. Uh, hi, sir. Vaibo this way. Vaibo this way. Not related to the this one, but I am facing one issue. Okay. Uh, if I can put it, uh, is it okay or? Uh, what is the issue? Tell me. Actually, I am trying to put a, a ATO model item on a sales order. Oh, 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 ATO model item, you cannot put on a sales order at all. <laughs> I mean, it's a configurator yeah. item. No, no, no. Here, the concept is different. You only have to configure the system will not populate the ATO item. Whereas in eBase, it is not so. We can even put a config ATO model item, ATO item directly. So here you have to put only a model item and not the ATO item actually. Model yeah. item, I mean the star item you're saying? Yeah, star item you cannot put. <clears throat> it doesn't work on the star item, right? Is there is there are some restrictions on this? You put a model, the system will now create a star item and it will not progress actually. There is a change. But when I'm it's clicking on the configure and add, it's saying that ah, yeah. configure and add, it's it is attached to the model. So it is coming when I'm clicking on it, it's saying that uh, the item is not set up properly. Ah, that means what GOP is not set up properly. The GOP is missing actually. Right? GOP setups are missing, or some mistakes you have made on a, you watch my videos on the YouTube actually on this. That will be you about it. If okay. GOP setups are not proper, then it will not allow you to configure and add is not okay. Okay. Any other questions from anybody else? Otherwise, we'll not meet at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow and then we'll now make the expense purchases now. Now, till now, we have not made an inventory purchase. Now, we're going to make an expense purchase. Destination is expensive. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, we'll not jump into what you are uh, uh, this thing. <clears throat> Product data hub. Kishore, are you there? Jaini, uh, do you have you got any value addition to this, or otherwise it was all known to you? Everything is known to you. No, no. I, I'm yeah, here. Value uh, addition only, no, no. Value addition only. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm here, no, no. Uh, Kishore, fine. Uh, so one question: uh, You are in receiving the inventory yeah. items into through I procurement. Uh, sorry, sorry, I not I procurement. Sorry, self service receiving. Yeah, we are going to see it tomorrow. That is what's called expense. Oh, we are going to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow we oh, that is expense, that is fine. Yes. Yeah. But uh, inventory item, how did you receive in uh, self servicing? We will uh, discuss about it tomorrow. We will not discuss about okay. it. Thank you. We'll Nana, yeah. any chances we have like common procurement BU, like you know, central BU? Oh, no, no. Then... The concept is almost done away with. We don't have any such concept. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow, we will not, since you asked for it, I will not try to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That uh, centralized okay. BU concept. I will yeah, not done it. Uh, let me do it tomorrow. Fine. Please remind me. Fine. After the expense purchase is completed, please remind me. I will not try for a centralized view. That's okay. 
ओके थैंक यू नाना नो ट्राई आई नॉट ट्राइड इट लेट अस नॉट ट्राई इट ओके आफ्टर द एक्सपोज पर दिस आई नॉट इट एंड देन आफ्टरवर्ड्स वी विल नॉट जंप इट अपॉन देयर ऑलराइट एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस नो गुड एंड बाय फॉर नाउ एंड देन वी विल नॉट मीट एट 5:30 पीएम टुमारो बाय 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 नाना थैंक यू नाना सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू नाना थैंक यू थैंक यू नाना